decision tree classifiers. We can use an iterative decision making strategy to create what are called decision trees. And we can use decision trees as predictive models. They're not the final answer, far from it, as we'll see. So remember, we have big data in the three V's, high volume, high variety, high velocity, large, complex, relatively fast. We have to worry always about velocity. And we have to remember that big data is cursed, that large and complex has a dark side, if you want to think of it that way. Predictive models extract information, often from the use of decisions, from big data. Now complex networks can address the three V's, high volume modeled by high order networks, high variety by highly complex networks, large genus, multiple data types are completely possible, and high velocity can be addressed via network structures, small world, etc. In fact, complex networks often are themselves big data. This is a review, we've already seen these ideas. What we haven't talked about are the vertices of these networks. So up to this point, they've just been dots where the edges come together. But the decisions are made at the vertices. Processes can be implemented at vertices. And the next several lectures are going to be about what happens at vertices of large complex networks, or vertices of graphs, even when they're not large and complex. Now we'll end the course by relating the vertex activity to network structure. But most of what we are going to be doing until the end is going to be focused on what happens at the vertices of a network model. So let's go back and remember classifiers. We are going to look at binary classifiers where we have two classes. And we're going to think in terms of having a goal and that is to predict the class of an observation from the values of its features and we'll want to apply this to unclassified observations so we'll think in terms of having a set of both observations that have been classified and observations that have not this is often called supervised learning our focus is going to be on binary and we're going to use some notation we've already seen this somewhat so two classes positives and negatives P, capital P, will be the number of positives, capital N, the number of negatives. So we have two possible predictions, positive or negative. Little p will be the number of observations classified as positive, and little n, the number of observations classified as negative. Notice we've used p for probability, but now we're going to start using it as a representative of number of positive observations, capital P, and number classified as positive little p. And as we've already seen as well, sometimes we'll use one for positives and zero for negatives. Now decision tree classifiers are based on information gain at nodes and what we do is we define a construct a decision tree recursively. So the partition at the previous level defines the populations at the next level. So we have a condition and then once we've applied that condition we get a partition and then we apply a condition to the partition that we get uh, on the false side and another condition that we get for the true side and we construct each one of these to have maximal information gain and we'll stop when every factor has been considered or when the training set is completely classified now actually we'll never want to go that far and we'll talk about that later so let's look at an example who's getting dessert so we have data for 111 restaurant patrons and we're going to ask the question can we train a decision tree to predict who gets dessert well there's a lot of things to consider whether they're adults, what their appetizer was, whether they're vegetarians, did they get beef, did they get tea, so on and so forth. In the data, only 35 of the 111 get dessert. So if Y, in our case, is the uh, variable corresponding to 
uh, getting dessert. So that means true for y is 35 and false for y is 76. And so the entropy for y just by itself is 0 0.8992 bits. So this is the largest possible information gain we can get from a condition. So let's look at the different categories. Let's start with gender. So where we have gender equals female, you'll notice that uh, if we go through the calculations, and I did this separately uh, in, a, in a different, uh, actually in the IPython notebook, and found that the uh, entropy of Y, given that gender equals F condition, is 0 0.8990. And that's an information gain of 0 0.0002. If we look at adult uh, equals uh, yes, then that had a specific entropy for that condition of 0 0.8988. And we subtract that from the 0 0.8992 and we get 0 0.004 bits. For the beverage, there are four possibilities, water, tea, soda, or other. And you'll see there are our uh, specific entropies. And the information gain is 0 0.8992 minus the specific entropies for the different beverages. And so therefore, the highest thus far is for the soda. For the appetizer, 0 0.1 0 0.0120 bits is the information gain. For the salad, 0 0.0025 is the information gain. And finally, for the entrees, let's recall that for the beverage, our high was 0 0.02. That turns out the largest information gain for an entree uh, is less than 0 0.02. So that is the highest. So the largest uh, for information gain for an entree though was 0 0.02 and 0 0.0210 is therefore the highest and so therefore uh, soda equals true or uh, the other three uh, equals true so this is the condition that will give us our highest so that means the decision tree starts as follows for beverage, we have beverage equals soda. For the true, we have 14 minus and 12 plus. And for the false, 62 minus and 23 plus. So then we would do this again for the 85 false for soda and the 26 true for soda. And when we do so, we find out that the next thing we would have on the true side, the information gains highest when we look at the appetizer. Did they get an appetizer? and then the where the entree was fish or uh, vegetarian and then salad and on the true side whether or not the entree was fish on the false side if they got uh, if they didn't get soda then the next thing we look at is whether or not they were male or female and so on now this is from a thing called rattle it's a data mining extension of R and we'll look at it more closely later and so it starts out with beverage equals other tea or water so that's the same as beverage not equal to soda and therefore we have the decision tree and this is the complete tree uh, not as complete as could be because trees get too long and we want to limit that we'll talk more about that later but it is a, a complete decision tree for who's getting dessert so is this person getting dessert? An adult male drinks tea, gets an appetizer and a salad and orders beef. Is he getting dessert based on our classifier? Well, let's find out. So male, adult, beverage, tea, got an appetizer and a salad and beef. So tea corresponds to uh, beverage equals other tea or water and that's the yes or the true and so we start out on that side and we go to where we have the appetizer and the appetizer is no that's the true direction so the, they did get the appetizer so appetizer equals no is false and that's 
that direction. And then they did get the beef, so we go in the true direction for the beef. And that's that direction. And notice we end at a node. We call this a leaf node. And at this leaf node, we can't go any further. And notice it's classified as no. He did not get dessert. Let's look at another example. Is she getting dessert? A f adult female who gets soda, an appetizer, a salad, and beef. So soda means that we're false for other tier water. And gender here is female, so we're false for gender equals male. And beef is true for entree equals beef, and so we go no. And no, she's not getting dessert either. Now let's look at another example. So there's a data set called the Car Evaluation Data Set at the UCI Machine Learning Repository. Survey data for six automotive features for 1,728 models and how desirable those models were for, to buyers. Here's what the data actually looks like. So we've got uh, the cost to buy is the buying variable, the cost to maintain, the luggage space, and the class has the possible values very good, good, acceptable, and unacceptable. Our goal is a decision tree classifier that's constructed from the car evaluation data, predicts if someone will rate a car as very good, and the method we're going to use is a binary classifier. So we're actually going to look at good versus very good, as we just said. So class 1, cars rated as very good, and class 0, cars not rated as very good. So there are 35 cars in class 1 and 1,693 cars in class 0. Here is the actual tree. And notice that in choosing Class 1 is very good, and you can see that they are blue down there toward the bottom. So in order to be very good, you have to have high safety. So notice that safety is low or medium. Uh, we will be false for that. If we're true for that, then we'll be Class 0. 100% of low or medium safety automobiles were not classified as very good. You need a medium or a low price to be considered by consumers as a very good car. You need four more passengers in order to be considered very good. You need sufficient luggage space. So if it's small, then 100% of those who got to this point and then looked at small uh, luggage space uh, said this was not a very good car. And finally, the very good does not have high maintenance costs. So notice we're false for maintenance equals very high and therefore we get uh, class 1 corresponds to these conditions. So in summary information gain can be used to construct decision tree classifiers via a sequence of conditions and decisions are applications of those conditions. So we're going to look uh, more closely at this later, but the set of data we use to train the thing is a training set, and then the unclassified observations, like is she getting dessert, is he getting dessert, that's called test data. Uh, but we're going to look also at validation sets, both in the next video and in the next lecture.